In the previous episode of Plant One On Me, Emily Coletti took us through one of the Aroid greenhouses at the Missouri Botanical Gardens, which is not open to the public. In this episode, we continue our tour and see a range of other genera, including Monstera, Hapline, Studnera, and more. All right, so this is room number two that we're this in. This is room number two, but it's there's there's actually three sections to it. Okay. And this has a lot of different genera in it. This episode is brought to you by Birch Living, which makes organic non-toxic mattresses made in the USA. All right, so I got a new mattress from Birch Living. And what's cool about it is that it's using all sustainable or environmentally preferable materials. So they have organic certification, fair trade certification, responsible wool certification. And they also have these individually wrapped steel coils in here too. So it offers more lumbar support. And I'm gonna be trialing it out because there's 100 days of trial. So you could trial it out for like three months and see if you really like it. And as you could see, it is a premium mattress in a box. <laughs> Look at that big burrito roll. <laughs> what I really like about this though is that it has latex in it. I kind of describe it as like a really firm tofu, but it's very nice to sleep on. And I love my sleep. I've never pulled an all-nighter. I get probably six to eight hours of sleep every night and I really value my sleep. So having a solid mattress is good because I want good sleep, so let's open this up. I kind of feel like it's one of those things where you unwrap and then it just like unfurls itself. Oh. <laughs> it's like slowly inflating. It is, it's slowly inflating, it's crazy. So actually, though I'm gonna be trialing this, this is gonna go in the tiny house that we're renovating at Flock. I mean, I always expect like the ones in a box to be like that cheap foam that, you know, doesn't like last after six months. But I mean, we looked into this. This is like great materials. It just feels really luxurious. And also has pillows that come with it. So if you get a mattress, you also get pillows. I could actually jump on this one because it has the steel coils. <laughs> so if you're looking for a new mattress, you could click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash oaks, that's O-A-K-E-S, for $400 off your mattress plus two free pillows. It's been a while, so some of the labels may have come off. Like you have the Raffidophoros, and we only have just a few of some of these. Right. Like, I mean, very small. I. I never saw it growing this way because I've always seen them. The ones that I see always for sale are like silvery colored, like almost like a silver, but maybe because this is growing in deeper shade in a way. Yeah, this it gets is darker, pretty low colorful. light. Here. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's amazing that we have such a world renowned collection right. growing in such unnatural <laughs> conditions. conditions. Well, you have, you have. Plants down here, yeah. then you have hanging plants above it, then you have a catwalk, then you have this wall. So the wall cuts out a lot of... Yeah, and then you have ones growing under the bench, which like well, cuts out... these you know. are all volunteers down here. Wow, I've, okay. I've, I've totally wiped these out, Yeah. and, and within a year's time, <laughs> they'll come all back. So they're all volunteers vining down and then just taking hold in the gravel below. Oh my gosh. So it's, um, and again, that was another project is to make sure I had all the identities of all those. Uh, yeah. And then now this one, you have some in the hanging basket. Now that's too. a pachinarium. That actually has been here for over 20 years. Really? So it's been repotted, but sometimes they take up so, so much space. Right. Again, it's like, you don't r totally get rid of everything or change everything when you come in. Right. Nor do you have the time. So most of the things that are hanging are philodendrons and raphidophoras. Are, this looks like an Atabo poensi philodendron. Um, philodendron, it's um, the, I guess the cultivar name on it is Marie. Oh, so it's a cult uh, cultivar. I think so. So, 
It, but it grows very lovely. It's grown yeah. up at the res uh, director's residence on a couple of summers. And so some of these you're growing up high to get to their mature state or? Um, well, originally they were put on there to um, kind of emulate where they might be growing. Like if it, they're growing off the side of a tree or right. off the side of a rock or off the side of something, give it room to grow. Uh, we still don't get very many of the monsteras or the syngoniums to bloom, and that was the hope. Yeah. But um, not always quite sure what it is that, that make them do that. And I know those are the syngoniums, so. Yeah, um, this is a syngonium that's like trying to get over into this. I think this is a, still an aplysmium, but I don't know. It's just not, it's just some of these don't have uh, species names, I guess. Oh, no, well, I mean, if they're, if they're, I call them the spa, they're, yeah. they don't, they're, yeah. they're unknowns. Unknown, And yeah. then, so, I mean, that's kind of was the goal at the beginning when they collected, to collect sterile plants so that we can grow them on, so that they can flower, so mm -hmm. that we can see if it's an, if it's a new species or if it's just uh, um, um, something that he already has. I know that's another syngonium. Yeah, this is a syngonium erythrophyllum, which has made it into the houseplant market. They, um, not, it took a while for it to be happy in its pot. Yeah. <laughs> it did. So, yeah, so we, we have various different things on the wall. And sometimes I put things on the wall just to see how they'll do on the wall because a lot of things are all epiphytic. You want to try to put them. Mm -hmm. Years ago, before they put this particular greenhouse up, there was an older greenhouse, and that was in the early 80s, which I also worked here at that time for three years before I had my children. But we actually just grew the vines on the wall and didn't have any netting or anything. So they'd attach themselves. And if you go up there, you can see a lot of times, like be behind a lot of the netting, you can see how the roots the, the, have yeah. attached themselves to yeah. the wall. And that's all watered through a drip line okay. through the top. That gets watered like twice a week. I mean, look at this humongous guy. <laughs> Another pachinarium. And uh, see here, a yeah. rapidophora on the wall that, that just loves attaching itself, the small leaf one over there. I mean, you're lucky that this is built of concrete. I mean, th these plants are gonna eventually just take over. <laughs> Can we head up to the top? Oh, is sure, that easily. Love yeah, that. Yeah, back here on the stairs. Just see another. From, it, from another perspective, I feel like I'm being engulfed down here. <laughs> always, I always try little different things too, like this, this is, is one. Just seeing if it'll live. I, yeah. I, it's, it's disconnected from the mother plant and it kind of grew up through the stairs. I wish it would have came up on the other side of the railing. Yeah. But uh, anyway, this is a um, section, another just small section. Now this is the um, dig digitinervium. I always get the dactyphylum and the digit nerve mm -hmm. a little bit messed up in my mind, but the, with, with, with the digit nerve, nervium, it's the digits and the and the and nerve the, and the vein. veins. Yeah. yeah. So this section is a very small section, and that's and again, this is another one where I had to try different places mm -hmm. in order to figure out where it's going to be. So. And sometimes there's just extra plants that people are getting rid of, so. Oh, uh, yeah. Dwarf fork pines, you All know. the uh, aracaria. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I don't know. Usually clockwise, I guess. And again, um, this used to be where we would put extra plants. Mm -hmm. And some of these are extra or more. There's a bloom. I think it was there yesterday. Oh, way oh yes, right there. here, right here. They're so, they're so in. You it's can't like a, barely see them. Yeah, but it's like a bright pink. And it's like a fuchsia and like coral color almost. Yeah. So these are kind of like where Excuse you me. put extra plants <laughs> and or. Now this one is uh, Lazari. This is 
philodendron lazari. Um, that is endemic, to, and I'm not sure where it is. I just remember the story that yeah. it is endemic to just like one place in the world. Wow. So, like one, like one rock, one. <laughs> oh my God. So I don't like to know those things about because then you feel like very like oh my God, this is the last one on this one rock face facing south on this one tiny little island. Yeah. So this is, is an this alocasia. An alocasia? Yeah. Yes. It is an alocasia and it is a uh, sinuata. Okay. I probably don't pronounce that correctly, but um, yeah, it is. Now here's another feature we yeah. have here. Our black tag tags will mean they're rare or endangered or oh, whatever. So okay. we do, um, we, we do show that here with our tag tagging system throughout the garden. Mm -hmm. If you see a black tag, you will know that. Look at down, down through here too. It's just exquisite, all the different layers that you're seeing. red berries on that kind of bird's nest Oh, one. yes, yes. That looks pretty cool. And that particular one loves, I think that's Wag Wagneranum. It's uh, Anthurium Wagneranum. So the top shelf there and then that whole row are, yeah. all, are all Pachinarians, are the okay. bird's nests. Okay. So um, these are billetiers, aren't they? Or yes, yeah, yes. And then what's fun is, I mean, on the wall, look how great the leaf they leaves look. They look so good. Whereas opposed to some of them in the pots, they do take yeah. the size of their container sometimes. Yeah. Well, I have one in a pot that I've never trained, and it's it's trails like this, but and the leaves are fine. They're not this big, but like you could see how it still trails, but it's like going up. You know, it wants to it wants to stay attached to something. I really need to attach mine to something to get these massive leaves. But it does. Mine has started to lose some of the orange in the in the um, this, the petioles, and this one seems to have like less orange as well. Well, I when mean, when they're younger, they feel really orange. They. Um I mean, it's just amazing to watch them as they yeah. mature because on with some of them, especially on some of the philodendrons, they're viney as they, as as a juvenile, but and look totally different as a, a as an adult. an adult. Yeah. So and then their their stems become very short and compact, but then they also get very wide. Yeah. So basically, from about probably. On, on down here, where I, where I found out over the years, these big philodendrons below us, because mm -hmm. those are the known philodendrons below us, um, get to be massive. Mm -hmm. And then all of the smaller ones around them uh, kind of got overshadowed. Mm -hmm. So I started bringing them up here. So now this is more or less some, not, th these are, um, <laughs> obviously um, Diefenbachia, mm -hmm. but as we go down here, some of the plants came up here because they didn't like it down there mm -hmm. or and have done much better up mm -hmm. here. Or, but now I, I use it as my small plant area, are smaller because it's, there's too much competition down here. So even though there's not many Monstera up here, this is an unknown. So. A few of those come up here. The only problem is it gets really hot in the summertime up I here. I see, yeah. But and even it also rises, right? Right. So, so it'll get it. I try to keep it under a hundred up yeah. here, and we get do get some decent circulation from the jet tube because yeah. we're right next to it. But as you go up in the greenhouse, it really the temperature. Yeah. You just forget how hot it is. Yeah. Um, so most of the time, you do a lot of stuff up here mm -hmm. in the morning. 
or even in the later in the afternoon mm -hmm. because then the sun is kind of cocked over mm. in the horizon mm. but um yeah so the smaller philodendron c come in here and then, yes that one's very lovely oh this is one of those beatrices as well yeah this this is tending that's growth habit is tending to stay pretty colonizing yeah. and, and compact so it doesn't like where, travel like yeah. that yeah so it's not so much a trailer as some of the other ones are. This one has an interesting petiole. Philodendron Bonifazie. That one had to have been on the wall before, yeah. and so I had to take it off and restart it and put it here. Obviously, because that's what I use for the wall yeah, tags. Yeah, yeah. Here's a billetier with the orange petioles. This guy, there's two that look very similar. Yeah, Linnae. Uh, this one, they just tend to trail very well. Mm. And they send out these nice long it's, tendrils. It's funny because initially they look like a, a nice little bird's nest and then they kind of start to, to trail. And now, then they'll, they'll just, they'll just kind of trail along yeah. the floor and find a, a good spot to start put, in, up put another rosette yeah. up. Yeah, so. Philodendron grandipes. There. Almost looks like a hum hum uh, Adolonema or yes. Hamalomena. I always have good. to yeah. I have to always rely on what Tom yeah. labels it. So there's a couple of these that have done funny things. Um, and fought, you know, have oh, yeah. fallen over and, and wind up rooting themselves. Try it's there's one right here. This one but it is does quite lovely. Undula undulatum, this one. This one has great veins, actually. You see it in the light. Look. This Philodendron Williams eye. Yeah, this well, big one right here? This, yeah. It just kind of, its pot fell over and okay. it just was able to send out all these aerial roots and, and it then does, hung, hung itself it up. just it just hangs there yeah <laughs> it does really well <laughs> and that's that's one of the ones i tom likes that one and yeah. i don't i'm not sure what why but um they all have fun stuff um this particular one does not like to be on the lower level okay this one is philodendron workoviniane and it, it this is one of the first ones i brought up here and this is like a tripartite leaf. See that? Uh, yep, like right here. Oh, that was good. Hmm. And then we transitioned to uh, anthuriums and the small anthuriums. Right. So that was a, a new use of this catwalk up here. Well, I just think you're running out of space and you just have oh, to figure yeah. out it's, like where. It's like, okay. You're like, and these are guys that are in the nosebleed seats now. Now this goes around in uh, the circle, so. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So should we do the circle? I mean, we could just walk through it real quickly. Yeah. But, you know, you can. I mean, as you can see when you look in the wall over here yeah. and see some of the um, kind of the dried up inflorescences and such, this is the original reason for being having the wall so that we can yeah. get close up to it, see the see the inflorescences. Um, and then uh, it's interesting when you go to and when I go to start trimming, oh here's here's a nice lovely one. It's actually an anthesis right now. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. And again that's like the clarigerum like we saw earlier with that the funky mm -hmm. um, leaflets. But yeah, that's I always love when I see get to see an anthesis. But so you're actually able to like work with them up close. That was yeah. the, that was Tom's original thoughts, I think, um, to get them to have the catwalk up here. Not only only to be able to grow the way they might in nature, but also to be able to see them up close. Yeah. Good old Monstera deliciosum. And then, yeah. Oh yeah, it's like, it's like I wanna free the leaf. <laughs> Go free the leaf. I, yes. 
Unbelievable. I mean, this one's not even growing in a pot. It was, a, a, that, that is, you know, and that's been here a long time. It was yeah. originally in one, in pots. Anthurium paraguayensis. They were originally in pots and they were just extras. Yeah. And you're like, now they just all one big root mass. Yeah. And uh, see the same, same inflorescence, yeah. but this one is actually maybe had some pollination on it. Mm -hmm. So. I was just saying how this, uh, this Monstera Deliciosa, and you mentioned that there's blooms. Yeah, right up top here. Yeah. And, and you can't really get to it from up top. Cause it's, yeah, because you, ha you have to like hang over or something in order to get to it. Right, but yeah. it's one of the few monsteras that I've ever bloomed in here. That's a deep abaki okay. underneath it. Um, but wait, what pot is it coming from? It's it's from coming from this pot. Oh here. my god, it's such a tiny little pot. Right. For such so, a big plant. So that's once it once they attach themselves yeah. to the wall. Yeah. They're not really getting anything from the pot right. anymore. So they're just getting all, whatever it roots into. And I love how you can just see how even if there's not a lot of roots oh, back yeah. there. I mean, it's but even like, look at how it's connected to the pipe. It's just like literally hugged the pipe. And see this pipe right here. So there's at least four inflorescences up mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it's, that's pretty exciting about that. And, and it's really the only monstera that's bloomed. In that I've yeah. noticed in here. Yeah. Yeah. Of all, all the ones that we have, we, there's one in the climatron when you first come in. Yeah. And it, it, it blooms. Yeah. I think it's a, no, I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but we've actually, and again, it has the orange berries on it. Right. So it's very distinctive. Oh my God, look at that alocasia too. Alocasias. This is just for tall, tall things back yeah. here. Yeah, that one right here. And, Shield and, shape. And then Morphophallus. More Amorphophallus. More Amorphophallus. And then this is what I was spying from up above. Right. And this is one of the bird's nests. So, I mean, everything in here is pretty much crowded in here and uh, but and they they sustain themselves most yeah. of the time. So which which one is this allocation? There was indica, indica. This one might okay because some of we have um, yeah this one's indica this with one. the variety of violins. Um, but this one here, this one's like the fry deck or something. Michael well that one might be the cro. Right? There's oh no no it's um, yeah Michaeliziana. These are, and they're sometimes called, like the cultivar is called Frydeck. But these are, these are common house plants. I can never keep these free of spider mites though in my house. Oh, even in here, spider mites are mealybugs. We get yeah. a lot, a lot of spider mites and mealybugs in this section. Yeah. So the- Alocasia, colocasia are like, for me, spider mite magnets. I think the thinner, thinner the leaf. Yeah the more apt the spider mites like yeah. to come come to. Yeah. So yeah, it's, <sighs> you know you're going to get them, and especially when you have a hot summer, summer August yes. day, yeah. and then all of a sudden you don't have them, and the next day you do. As soon as you said like those few hundred degree days, I could just imagine like spider mites just like. <laughs> so this used over. to be our hottest house. Okay. And it used to always be over a hundred degrees in here, and then, we finally had the drip wall put in in 2013. And how, mu how much does the drip wall decrease the temperature? It's generally about, it never gets over 85 in here. Really? It, it has changed this whole, the whole dynamics of this, yeah. of this room. Now what I understand, and when I was uh, in Asia a couple years ago, the temperatures they like mm -hmm. are about 85 degrees. Mm -hmm but it's very, 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 very humid. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't, I don't think they really tend, at least with my experience, mm -hmm. and I don't like to talk about them in any other way than what I've experienced them, yeah. is that they do not like 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. And they do not like to, 
be no airflow. Mm -hmm. So prior to 2013, the only airflow we had in here were the jet tubes. Mm -hmm. So it was the air in here being 100 degrees and, and stagnant. stagnant. As soon as we'd get an 80 degree day outside, mm -hmm. we'd get sunburn on all of the Diefenbachia. So this mm -hmm. is my Diefenbachia table. Mm -hmm. and, ha and then the, at the end of this table where there's a morphophallus and a, a few more of the um, uh, xanthosomas and mm -hmm. such, those have fallen off the bench. So I have, yeah. you know, um, as soon as you get an 80 degree day, it, it would just scorch yeah. the, the leaves. So um, one Saturday I was working, I, I actually, it's not, it was probably this one. I put up this uh, luminette, mm -hmm. so <laughs> by myself, <Yeah. laughs> um, in order to get it to cool down. Because yeah. the luminette usually brings it down about 10 degrees. So this is this it's pretty is, significant, actually. Yeah. yeah. So it ma it makes it nice. And this is a this is a specific net that greenhouses use then. Right. Yeah. Okay. We have new shading far in here, yeah. so um, we're gonna put the new shading like well, yeah. like that's what's in but here. But that's impressive. If this could bring it down to ten degrees, and then you have the uh, walls, the drip walls, I guess are yeah, what are um, they called? Yeah. Um, It'll come to me like yeah, and so it, it basically then gets the, it down to like eighty five, right? And then, so that's a, yeah. a good fifteen yeah. or more degrees. So this is pretty stationary, a nice temperature in here. So when everybody's working outside, it's hundred degrees outside. I'm like, you would think it because some of these greenhouses are still that bad. Yeah, and I'm like, it's comfortable in here. <laughs> You have the pachinarium, and these are generally seem to be some of the biggest anthuriums. Mm -hmm. So um, and so, uh, and they have some very interesting colorations of the berries and such. Mm -hmm. And again, like you can see these over here, how big they are, and again, how top heavy they might be. Again, Absolutely. Far, uh, so you need that weight of the terracotta. I mean. A lot this of this one is Anthurium affinae. And what is this? Is this like a ZZ or That's something? That's a ZZ plant. Yeah. Yeah. Those right, it's a Studenera? Right. Okay. Studenera. So yeah. they they all have that fun no indentation where the where this uh, petiole actually comes into the center of the plant or not center, but although you it does happen sometimes, obviously. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, look at that, see? Huh. Just doesn't play, uh, play by the rules. Oh, and these, oops. <laughs> doesn't want to stand up. This is a nepth uh, nephthitis. Look at this. And it wow. always, it always, I Is this love, a Swania? Yeah, I have, love, I have this, but this is so full. Love the orange berries. Oh my God, look at that. And then when it that blooms, the, the inflorescences are so inconspicuous. Yeah. You don't even see them until they start to bury. That's incredible. I just never saw it so full. I have a small pot and it's, I've seen the flower come out. This one by this Abzellii. Yeah, those are- Those have neat looking leaves. Those are ones that we actually got through our index, I don't know how to say the word, mm -hmm. synonym, where we um, actually, different botanical gardens will um, send out a list of seeds that they have mm -hmm. available, and then we're allowed to like choose from, fr from them. And mm. we, we did get that, those, in that way. This one's a 
Hapaline? Did you mention that one? Yeah, I was, I was mentioning that yeah. earlier, the Hapalines, which are very similar, again, to yeah. that whole thin-leafed, yeah. um, a lot, you know, you could mix them up easily uh, with the Xanthodelmas and some yeah. of the other. Anthurium purpureum. I mean, we could be here all day. Right. I mean, it's 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 there's just so much. There's so much. And it's and and this is interesting too with with the, with these over here that you pointed out. Yeah. That when we first when our um, uh, propagator got these in, um, he grew them in full sun, mm -hmm. and they looked so sad. Mm -hmm. They were just so so you know. And I go. Please give them to me so yeah. I can repot them into the correct media and let's put them in the shade. <laughs> and look how gorgeous they, they are. are. Look, and this one looks gorgeous too. And this is in the same genus. Uh, this is Nephitis poissoni, poissoni. And look at these orange berries. And yeah. I, I love the leaf shape of these. The, the orange is the most striking berry color. I mean, yeah. the lavender is pretty cool, but the orange. I don't think I've ever seen the lavender. Oh, the, on the anthuriums, right? Sometimes the anthuriums have them. I have to say, this is just so. I mean, it just goes on and it on. It goes on and on. I mean, it's exquisite. I mean, I wish we had, I don't know, a week just to go through here, but we'd never even get it. We'd never even, if even if we had a week, we'd never get them all. Oh, no, no, yeah. by, no by no means, by no <laughs> means. They are pretty incredible. Thank you so much for your, your work here because this is doing such a service for the, the plant community as well, and I hope you know that too because you're, you're keeping these in great condition. Given the space and the amount that you have here, it's just, uh, Emily, I'm kind of blown away. This is incredible work, and it's just like, a team of, I know you have a small team, but it's like almost like a team of one. <laughs> what do your kids think? Um, my kids think that plant people are a distinct breed of their own. <laughs> and I fit in well. <laughs> but I didn't come back to work until my oldest daughter graduated from high school. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your work. This is incredible. Let us know what you thought of these tours and if there were any plants that really stood out for you in the comments below. And if you dug this episode, let us know too by giving it a thumbs up. And a big thank you to all the supporters and subscribers here on Plant One On Me. You really make these videos possible and we're so grateful for that. As a reminder, 1% of our Google AdSense proceeds go towards plant conservation initiatives as well. So feel free to recommend some standout plant conservation work too. I'll see you in the next episode.